Can't we get into a big tub and float there? Returned he. I've often sailed easily like that round the pond at home. My child, that is a brilliant idea, I said. We very soon found four large casks made of good wood and strongly bound with iron hoops. They were exactly what I wanted. With a saw, I cut each cask into half, so that we now had eight tubs. My eight tubs now stood ranged in a row near the water's edge, and I looked at them with great satisfaction. I now tied a long rope to the stern of our boat, and we began to push. Soon our boat was safely launched. The boat appearing steady, I got in. The boys brought oars to be ready for the voyage. The ducks and geese were set free. They started swimming in the water at once. The pigeons, glad to find that they could fly again, swiftly made for the shore. All being ready, we moved away from the wreck. The elder boys took the oars. Everyone wore a float belt and had something useful close to him in case of being thrown into the water. We had left the two dogs, Turk and Juno, on the wreck. But when they saw us leave without them, they started howling and sprang into the sea. They followed us, occasionally resting their paws on the edges of the float belts around each person. Oh, look here, father, cried Jack, drawing a little spyglass joyfully out of his pocket. He gave it to me, and I started looking towards the island. I soon saw an opening where a stream flowed into the sea. We rode towards the stream, and we found ourselves in a small bay. The water was perfectly smooth and of moderate depth. The ground seemed plain, on which it was easy for us to land. We started looking for a suitable place to make a tent in which to pass the night. When this was done, the boys ran to collect grass to spread in the tent for our beds, while I collected wood to make a fire. After a few minutes, I was startled by Jack's cries for help. He was at some distance, and I ran towards his voice. I found Jack standing in a deep pool, screaming. As I came closer, I saw that a huge crab had caught his leg in its powerful claw. I waded through the water, and seizing the crab firmly by the back, managed to make it loosen its hold. Fritz told us how he had been to the other side of the stream. It is so different from this side, he said. It is really a beautiful country, and the shore, which runs down to the sea in a gentle slope, is covered with all sorts of useful things from the wreck. Do let us go and collect them, and father, we can return to the ship and bring back some of the animals. Stop, my boy, I said. All will be done in good time. While we were talking, Jack had been unsuccessfully trying to open an oyster with a spen knife. Here is a simpler way, I said, placing the oyster on the fire. It immediately opened. Soon the sun was sinking beneath the horizon. The hens gathered round us and began to pick up the crumbs of biscuits which had fallen while we were having our dinner. My wife then took out some handfuls of grain from a bag she carried and began to feed the poultry. We were all ready to sleep, and having closed our tent, we lay down to rest.